Hello, I'm Bryce Menix, and the topic of this presentation is going to be ECE 2031 Digital Design Laboratory TA Training. I'll first tell you a little bit, a little bit about me and the purpose of this presentation, and I'll give you a I'll tell you a brief anecdote about a recent debugging experience that I had, and then I'll explain how teaching assistants can debug circuits and programs efficiently, how BlueJeans can be used as an important tool for remote instruction and how uh, teaching assistants can truly teach students effectively. And then we'll conclude and I'll provide you with some additional resources. So just to tell you a little bit, a little bit about me, I am a third year electrical engineering major and computer science minor here at Georgia Tech. And I've been a teaching assistant for EC 2031 for four semesters now, ever since spring 2020. The purpose of this presentation is to provide valuable tips and guidance to EC2031 teaching assistants, especially new EC2031 teaching assistants, so that they can best assist and teach students in both in-person and remote environments. I recently assisted a student with debugging a circuit that seemed to show no output. The student was frustrated and had been trying to debug the problem for a couple of hours, trying to see if their uh, chips were broken or if their logic was incorrect and they were using an LED as an indicator to light up when the output of the circuit was asserted. They, we, I spent around 10 to 15 minutes checking the power and ground connections of each chip, checking their logic and checking the basic wiring of the protoboard with them in order to solve the problem when I suddenly realized that the student might not understand that LEDs do have a polarity and that the positive, the positive leg, the anode, is the longer leg, and the negative leg, the cathode, is the shorter leg. And we did realize that the LED was plugged in with a reverse polarity, and when the students turned the LED in the opposite direction, then their circuit worked perfectly. So this story really illustrates how it is easy to overlook seemingly trivial solutions when solving problems. A key strategy for debugging circuits and programs efficiently and for solving problems like the one I just told you about is to break down the problem into small, manageable pieces and to test each piece in a logical sequence in order to isolate where the problems might be coming from. Also, simply turning something off and on again can also be an effective strategy. If the student's having a hard time getting their uh, computer to recognize the USB cable that is plugged in and can be used to program a DE2 board, the student can often simply unplug the USB cable and plug it back in and it'll work. Also, if they their files have somehow become corrupted or changed that they downloaded from a website, then the student can just simply re-download the altered files and see if those will work as they're supposed to. Also, if the student might have somehow set up the project incorrectly, they can just create a new project with the same files and that can also often be the solution. A student can also use a logic probe, shown here, in order to test each connection to see if that connection is high or low. As we've been discussing, it is important to not disregard the seemingly trivial solutions that are often the solutions to the problems that students frequently have. For example, it's a good first step to check the wiring of a student's protoboard in case they misunderstand how the connections on the protoboard are set up. Or as mentioned in the anecdote that I uh, told you, it's, it might also be worth checking the polarity of the LED. And often a good strategy is to check the power and ground connection of each chip, because if that's set up incorrectly, you can get very strange outputs. It's also important to not get stuck trying to solve a single student's problem for more than 20 minutes if other students are waiting in the queue because these students who are waiting in the queue might have a problem that can be solved in two minutes and it'll allow them to continue on with the lab and to continue to get stuff done. So if you're having trouble with solving a student's problem, then you can ask other on-duty TAs for their advice. And if they can't help you, then you can ask on Microsoft Teams for tips from professors and any other TAs who may not be in the BlueJeans meeting. You can also refer the student to Piazza or other resources such as their previous course textbooks, their lab materials, or any online resources that you might be aware of. Since the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic, EC2031 
has been relying heavily on BlueJeans to provide remote instruction to students. Uh, both students and uh, teaching assistants can communicate by either unmuting their audio with this button or through the chat. And they can also unmute their, the students can unmute their video with this button in order to show physical uh, circuits for checkoffs or to show their D2 board for uh, checkoffs and assistance. Or they can show their code or other or simulation waveforms by clicking the share screen button here. You can also start a breakout session, which can be useful for helping multiple students within the same session. Uh, with apps and the start breakout session. When a BlueJeans meeting is first created, it is important for teaching assistants to create approximately six breakout rooms with the apps and start breakout session button. Uh, essentially, you just go to apps, then you can click add room uh, six times and then click the start breakout session button here. And if you encounter a buggy breakout room, you can have both the TA and student to try to leave and return. Or if that doesn't resolve the bugs, then you can uh, move to, simply move to a different breakout room, which is often the solution. If the entire meeting uh, seems buggy, then you can leave and return. And if that still doesn't resolve the solution, then you can notify all of the teaching assistants and students before you uh, drop everyone, as shown in the previous image, and then return to the meeting. It is also important for teaching assistants to remember to accomplish their duty of actually teaching students effectively. They should not simply give students answers, but they should walk them through uh, solving the answer by asking them guiding questions, telling them their thoughts as they debug, and reminding them about useful debugging strategies. Teaching assistants should also try to ask questions about checkoff results with, when possible, such as, what does this uh, simulation really mean? Can you walk me through this, uh, your simulation waveforms, and how do you know that this is correct. And the teaching assistants can make comments about how a result reinforces class concepts. Teaching assistants should also make sure to set a good example for students. They should make sure to always be polite and respectful. And if a student has any misconceptions that are evident within their explanations, or if the student has any misunderstandings of the lab tasks, the teaching assistant should politely correct those misconceptions and misunderstandings. And the teaching assistant should always avoid making superstitious claims as to why their efforts, the students' efforts towards solving an EC2031 problem is failing. Uh, the Oftentimes it might be easy to say that a certain logic analyzer or robot might be more effective for solving a problem, but that's not really helpful for actually developing a student's skills and it really gives them an excuse as to why they shouldn't have to learn something. So superstitious claims should be avoided by teaching assistants. To wrap things up, teaching assistants should remember to debug methodically by isolating components and they should remember common solutions in order to more efficiently and quickly be able to debug problems. They should also remember that BlueJeans can be a very useful tool for remote checkoffs and assistance, and they should remember that more breakout rooms in BlueJeans is often better than fewer in case bugs are encountered with those breakout rooms. The teaching assistants should also try to guide students to solutions rather than give them answers in order to make sure that the students are actually learning the course material. The teaching assistants are really not only there to help make sure the lab runs smoothly throughout the semester, but they're also there to contribute to the skills of the next generation of engineers. So as teaching assistants, you all have a very important role to play. Teaching assistants should also make sure to check out the lab TA handbook that's provided by professors at the start of each semester, the online lab manual for information about specific labs each semester uh, from the course website. They should also make sure to check out the TA info manual for lab specific tips that's also located at the course website and they should make sure to attend the TA meeting at the start of each semester. And here I've actually provided the fall 2020 recording of this meeting. And the TA can also reference lab manuals and notebooks within the TA desk in the lab once things return back to the in-person lab setting. Are there any questions?